Lorax Nightmare has twisted both the land and its inhabitants. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about Sylvanesty in the War of the Lance era. I would like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel, and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate links. I am referencing the Tales of the Lance box set and War of the Lance sourcebook for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. The nation of Sylvanesty has suffered the most in the War of the Lance when the Speaker of the Stars, Lorak Caledon, used the Dragon Orb in an attempt to halt the advance of the Dragon Armies. But instead, the Spirit of Viper within the Dragon Orb took control of Lorak, summoned Kyan Bloodbane, and twisted the land into a living nightmare. While these fabled woods were the homeland of the Elves for millennia, they had to earn it through two Dragon Wars. Now, in the War of the Lance, they must somehow cleanse the forest of Lorak's nightmare and start life anew. While the War of the Lance era only recently affected Sylvanesty, let's examine how it was just before and after Lorak used the Dragon Orb. The Sylvanesty forest is unutterably beautiful. The trees stretched high into the sky, creating a canopy over the forest floor. The crystalline Thonthalas River ran through the forest, splitting to surround the capital city of Sylvanost, then turning west to split again toward Blood and the Plains of Dust. The cities were crafted from living wood and marble. After the vast population fled to southern Ergoth and Lorak's nightmare took over the land, the climate matched its new state. Winters run from Hararmont to Chiselmont, which feature blizzards and biting winds. Springs are stormy due to the warm currents from the eastern Korean Ocean. The Thonthalas River frequently floods between Chiselmont and Corrige, and summer begins thereafter from Corrige to Reorksmont with hot and humid weather and the perpetual stink of decay. By autumn in Reorksmont, the living trees turn as dry and brown as the dead ones. While the Savenesti are xenophobic, focusing on preserving the integrity of their race and being distrustful of other races after the Cataclysm, they live in a rigid caste system. You're born into a house, and you are expected to perform your duties under the house in service to the nation. They are taught the skills relevant to their house, and rarely ever leave or change their houses. Prior to their exile, they traded little with outsiders, and when they did, it was with ivory, wood, wine, wood carving, needlecraft, metalcraft, and herbal medicines. When the dragon armies first arrived, the Speaker of the Stars attempted to negotiate a truce. However, the dragon armies turned against their truce and attacked the nation. While the population fled, the Speaker stayed to face them with the dragon orb. Under a hundred Sylvanesty elves remain in the forest in this era. Sylvanost, the city of towers, was one of the most visually stunning cities in all of Kryn. It is situated on the island of Fallon. Its towers are made of white marble, ivory quartz, and glittering crystal. The stone would glow in the evening from the light absorbed from the Silver Moon Solinary. While every elf lives in towers of some height, the Palace of Kuinari and the Tower of the Stars are the tallest structures. The streets are now populated with flickering shadows of madness, undead and twisted creatures. The trees drip blood. The tower walls are now black and lean in unnatural angles. There are no more than 20 elves currently living in the tortured city. The next largest population lives in Kurinost. This town is northeast of Sylvanesty and was a beautiful crystal city. The entire city was crafted by the talented hands of House Mason and Woodshaper. Now the crystal buildings project horrid visions and can hypnotize those who gaze too long at their walls. The trees are poisonous and twisting, emanating sweet smells to draw in travelers and then reach out to ensnare them. Alanost now has a population of 18. It's located north of the capital on the banks of the Thonthalas River. While the population made their living off the river, their homes were made of stone and their storehouses were crafted from wood. The population that remained were transformed into feral monsters and summoned other magical creatures into its borders. Balanost and Ravenost each have under 15 residents. Balanost was named after the Kender General and is located south from Fallon Island. Both towns guard the southern entrance to the river. 
Now they feature swampy shores where octopus-like creatures terrorize any foolish enough to get close. Giant spiders have overrun the towns, covering them in webs, through which maniacal laughter from the undead echo. The skies are patrolled by blood-sucking creatures as well. Falinost was barely affected by the nightmare. Its white marble towers overlook its shoreline. Its ruler, Lord Dwallenweith Theladon of House Mariner, was charged with organizing the evacuation of Sylvanesty. Sithilnost is in the northern reaches of Sylvanesty, named after the son of Sylvanos. It was home to numerous important families. A portion of the town features a gallery of heroes, massive stone statues of elven warriors. The city was evacuated following a Green Dragon Army attack, and the nightmare that followed created a massive carnivorous plant which dwells therein. There are a few other important sites worth noting in Sylvanesty. The Barrier Hedge surrounds Sylvanesty. It is impassable by most, intentionally containing the worst of the nightmare within. The hedge now seems to have a life of its own, opening to allow passage, then closing in on those trapped within, slowly killing them. Fallon Island rests within the Thonthalas River. It is approximately 16 miles from east to west and 50 miles from north to south. The Fallon Forest covers the south end of the island and Sylvanost is in the northern third. The forest of Sylvanesty has been shaped by the Sylvan wood shapers for centuries into the breathtaking forest that it was. It is now known as the Bleeding Wood. Its trees are twisted and bent with their gnarled roots exposed. Their trunks run with blood as the nightmare has corrupted it. The Thontholos River, also known as the Lord's River, meanders from the Calchas Mountains through the forest and out into the Karain Ocean. It is normally heavily traveled by elves, but stands toxic in this nightmare. Finally, the Tower Shalost, also known as Waylorn's Tower, is a magical monument which preserved the body of Waylorn Wyvernsbane. It features a stack of complicated locks and puzzles in its timeless grove. While this tortured woods will ultimately be liberated from Lorak's nightmare, it will take years before the elves return, and then only a matter of decades before it's taken from them again, this time by the Minotaur Nation. But that is all I have to say about Sylvanesty in the War of the Lance era. What do you think of the Bleeding Woods? Do you blame Lorak for the nightmare? And finally, would you go adventuring within its borders? Leave a comment below. I would like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, a month ago, a day ago, you knew who you were, or thought you did. And would you have been correct? Would your answer be the same today as it was yesterday?